I'm Russell Foster. And I'm Leon Kratzman. And our book, published by Yale, is called Seasons of Life. About ten years ago, I wrote a book which was published by Profile, as it happens, called The 24-Hour Society, which was about the social consequences, the way our world was changing, and we were working longer hours, working into the night, losing the differentiation between weekend and weekday and all that. And during the course of writing that book, I went and saw Russell, who was then at Imperial College, because I wanted a chapter on the biology of all this, and what effect was going on. And he explained about circadian rhythms, which are these daily rhythms that affect every living creature. When that book had been published, we had a chat, and we decided that actually the public understanding of this was extremely lacking, and there was a need for a rigorously scientific book, but nevertheless popular enough to be read by the, in quotes, intelligent lay reader, which talked about these daily cycles, and that was something called Rhythms of Life, which came out about four years ago. Apart from that, as Russell will explain in a moment, there's not just daily cycles, there's also seasonal cycles, which are due to the way in which the Earth moves around the sun. And these seasonal cycles are extremely important. We know that birds migrate, animals hibernate, but they also affect human beings. And what we've done in this new book is try to explain the biology, try to explain what mechanisms we know, and how, in particular, humans are also affected by these seasonal rhythms. So, so in the same way that we're influenced by 24-hour um, um, cycles and the Earth revolving once around its axis, um, we're also profoundly influenced uh, by the movement of the Earth uh, around the Sun. And if I use a little visual aid at this point, <coughs> we pretend this is the Earth. Um, the Earth, of course, rotates once every 24 hours, but it's also rotating around the Sun once every year. But the critical thing is that the Earth doesn't sit on its axis like this. It's actually tilted by around about 23 degrees to the side. And that's what generates the seasons. Because as it goes around the sun, um, let's say, near on the sun, you're not, you're not, not to scale, sun. not to scale. <laughs> you see, that uh, uh, this time of year, let's say that June 21st, the northern hemisphere is receiving direct um, uh, rays of light, uh, whereas the southern hemisphere um, is receiving oblique um, uh, levels of light. And so we're going to have lots of solar radiation here and low solar radiation here. And that's going to change profoundly the amount of energy that falls on the planet and therefore its productivity. Now, if we were to go to the 21st of December and we imagine that the Earth has rotated round, then of course we're going to be like this. So the southern hemisphere gets lots of energy and the northern hemisphere gets very little. So as we proceed through the seasons, there's a profound change in the amount of radiant energy that hits the Earth and hence its productivity. And what organisms need to do is to time their life events, such as their seasonal reproduction, their migration, their hibernation, to these profound changes uh, of the seasons. Now, one of the, the things that we've tried to emphasize is that you need to prepare in advance for these changes. If, if we think about reproduction, um, many birds don't breed all the year. And so if they're not breeding all the year, they shut down the reproductive system. And so, for example, the testicular mass of a, of a bird when it's not in breeding is a few milligrams. In full breeding condition, it can be three grams, and that's 3% of its body weight. That's greater than the weight of the brain. Um, and so these are huge changes. And so if going from essentially no testicular mass to a huge bunch of testes um, requires time, and it needs a retooling and a regearing of, of physiology, and that will take time. So the bird needs to anticipate these predictable events and then gear up reproduction in advance of when it needs to reproduce. And what we've also spent a great deal of time talking about is the, the, the biological timing events whereby organisms can predict the seasons and hence fine-tune their physiology and, and, and in fact just get ready for reproduction or indeed shut reproduction down. If you put a squirrel in a room okay. and keep it at constant temperature, and keep it either the lights on all the time, so it doesn't know whether it's day or night, it's got no signal, and you just leave it there, you feed it and what have you, and you watch it for one year, two year, three year, four years. It does take a long time. Then that hat, that squirrel, will hibernate 
at certain times of the year, and it will do it roughly at the same time each year, even though it's got no signals telling it what time of the year it is. So it must have some sort of internal timer, this mm. circadian clock there, that's saying, hey, time to hibernate. So there are other animals and birds in particular that show that sort of behavior, not necessarily hibernation, but birds don't hibernate, but that annual thing. So there's a clock there. The problem is that nobody's been able to find it. Nobody knows what it looks like, nobody knows where it is, nobody knows how it works. We know a lot more about these daily clocks. We found them, you know, you can see them, and literally see them, and how they work. But they, these annual ones, not a clue. 